In 1 Chronicles chapter 6, we read about the descendants of Levi and the fact that God appointed from his descendants the priests and the Levites to work in the service of God. The descendants of Levi were not given a territory as the other tribes were given in Israel, but were rather given cities distributed across all the territories of the other tribes. And they were to lead the worship of God. They were the priests and the servants of God, serving God in education and in law and the worship of God. The particular role of offering the burnt offering was restricted to the descendants of Aaron, of the family of the Kohathites. But a leading person in that family of Kohathites was Samuel, and his descendants established the worship of God through song in the tabernacle and temple in the time of David. And so the worship of God in song has continued since that time. We continue reading in 1 Chronicles chapter 6 from verse 54. Now these are their dwelling places, that is, where the Levites lived, throughout their settlements in their territory. For they were given by lot to the sons of Aaron, of the family of the Kohathites. They gave them Hebron in the land of Judah, with its surrounding common lands. But the fields of the city and its villages they gave to Caleb the son of Jephunneh. And to the sons of Aaron they gave one of the cities of refuge, Hebron, also Libna with its common lands, Jatir, Eshtemoah with its common lands, Helen with its common lands, Debir with its common lands, Ashan with its common lands, and Beth Shemesh with its common lands. And from the tribe of Benjamin, Geba with its common lands, Elameth with its common lands, and Anathoth with its common lands. All their cities among their families were thirteen. To the rest of the family of the tribe of the Kohathites, they gave by lot ten cities from half the tribe of Manasseh, And to the sons of Gershom, throughout their families, they gave thirteen cities from the tribe of Issachar, from the tribe of Asher, from the tribe of Naphtali, and from the tribe of Manasseh in Bashan. To the sons of Merari, throughout their families, they gave twelve cities from the tribe of Reuben, from the tribe of Gad, and from the tribe of Zebulun. So the children of Israel gave these cities with their common lands to the Levites, and they gave by lot from the tribe of the children of Judah, from the tribe of the children of Simeon, and from the tribe of the children of Benjamin, these cities which are called by their names. Now some of the families of the sons of Kohath were given cities as their territory from the tribe of Ephraim, and they gave them one of the cities of refuge, Shechem, with its common lands, in the mountains of Ephraim, also Giza with its common lands, Jokmim with its common lands, Beth Horon with its common lands, Agilon with its common lands, and Gath Rimon with its common lands, and from the half tribe of Manasseh, Ena with its common lands, and Bilim with its common lands, for the rest of the family of the sons of Kohath. From the family of the half tribe of Manasseh, the sons of Gershom were given Golan in Bashan with its common lands, and Ashtaroth with its common lands, and from the tribe of Issachar, Kidesh with its common lands, Dabirath with its common lands, Ramoth with its common lands, and Enem with its common lands, and from the tribe of Asher, Mashal with its common lands, Abdon with its common lands, Hukok with its common lands, and Rehob, with its common lands. And from the tribe of Naphtali, Kedesh in Galilee, with its common lands, Hamon, with its common lands, and Kirjathaim, with its common lands. From the tribe of Zebulun, the rest of the children of Merari were given Rimmon, with its common lands, and Tabor, with its common lands. And on the other side of the Jordan, across from Jericho, on the east side of the Jordan, they were given from the tribe of Reuben, Beza in the wilderness with its common lands, Jazar with its common lands, Kedemoth with its common lands, and Nephath with its common lands. 
and from the tribe of Gad, Ramoth in Gilead, with its common lands, and Mahanaim, with its common lands, Heshbon, with its common lands, and Jazer, with its common lands. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we've read the last 30 verses of 1 Chronicles chapter 6. And it's spelt out to us that the descendants of Levi, that tribe, were spread throughout all the territories of the other tribes. They were given cities and common land around the city, land where they could graze their livestock. And these cities became obviously the focus of life, as today you have a community based in a city, and then the farmers who live in the territory around about. So the other tribes lived on their farms around about, but the cities were given over to the Levites. And the cities, that is the Levites, were supported by the tithes of those living on the farms round about. They didn't have to send their tithes a long way away, for the Levites were always near, and they were always in contact with them. And as I said, this provided the glue that held the nation of Israel together through the law of God that had been given through Moses, through the worship of God led by the Levites and the service of God led by these people. And they were spread right through the territory. There were six major centres, which are the cities of refuge. Two are explicitly so named in this chapter, Hebron in the south and Shechem in the middle. The names of other locations are given in Moses' writings. There were three cities of refuge on the east of the Jordan and three on the west of the Jordan, being located north, central and south. These were the leading cities. But the Levites didn't just live in these leading cities. They were distributed throughout the nation. So it is today that God doesn't put all the Christians in one place, but he distributes them throughout the whole world. Nevertheless, there are some places where there is a large number of Christians. These large centres have a big influence in the world, but the believers spread throughout the world provide light to the nations and peoples among whom they live. And so God is still using this ancient strategy, to influence the world in which we live. Why is Ezra naming all these places at this point in time? Well, there had been a disconnection of the people with the history of these places because of the exile. The northern kingdom being taken away by the Assyrians and the southern kingdom taken away by the Babylonians. But but in setting this down, we again have a declaration of the territory that God gave to the descendants of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob and that God claims all of the territory because all of the major cities were places where he was worshipped and the worship of God was to be delivered through the Levites. It was 400 years after Moses that the temple was built in Jerusalem and another 400 years later when it was destroyed by the Babylonians and carried away, and a new temple was built. But it's not just Jerusalem that is the city of God. The whole territory, the land of Israel, that ancient land, is the territory of God. And in the day that is coming when the Lord Jesus does establish his kingdom, the whole territory will again be be the territory of the tribes of Israel, as spelt out for us very specifically in the prophecy of Ezekiel, one of the key prophets of the exile. Another key prophet of that time was, of course, Jeremiah, who dwelt in Jerusalem, but was a priest from Anathoth. And then, of course, we also have Daniel, who was taken from Jerusalem, but became a senior advisor to Babylon, and to the early Persian Empire, because God is ruler of this world, and he places his people in places of influence for the blessing of all peoples.